Hey friends. Well, I've been putting this off long enough. We're going to do the operator super deep dive. Um, this is going to be as comprehensive as I can be within the time that I've given myself. If you feel like I've missed something that you feel like everyone should know, leave it in the comments. Um, let's, let's do this. <laughs> okay. So I'm also going to assume that you have watched the first video and that you're familiar with the interface of operator. And if you haven't watched that video, here's the link, check it out. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go over the things that I didn't go over yet. If you look at the oscillator section, you have the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment for all of these oscillators on this side. Okay. This coarse control follows the harmonic overtone series. So instead of it being octaves, you know, one octave, fifth octave, third, so on and so forth. Okay. When I, when I step through the course control, I'm, I'm frequency modulating at different, uh, harmonic overtone rates. And so these, when you have these locked in harmonic overtone series rates, you get these really awesome sweet spots, right? So, so hopefully as you step through these and you turn these different things up, you can kind of understand why they did it this way. It's because there are, there are there are sweet spots in FM synthesis, okay? So these course controls are set up for that. But let's just turn off these other oscillators, okay? And we're just gonna focus on the first one. Okay, so I can mess with the course, I can mess with the fine. I can also make it fixed. Okay, why would you want to fix the frequency of the oscillator? Well, there's a couple reasons, all right? Maybe one of the first ones might be immediately obvious. Well, you can synthesize drums with Operator, and in fact, Operator's drum synthesis modes are incredible, okay? You, you, can, you can make some really convincing sounds. So let's make a kick drum, all right? So we're gonna go over some of the advanced features just by making a kick drum, all right? So obviously a kick drum is, it consists of something that's making like a fundamental deep sound, right? So I'm using a, a sine waveform, right? Here's your waveform selector. And I've got an envelope that's pretty short, right? But that's not usually what a kick drum does. Usually you also have a do, do, you got, you got a pitch envelope. So what I can do is I can turn on the pitch envelope and I can make it go up here, right? So I'm, I'm increasing the peak. And if I turn the, see right now, it's still not gonna do anything. I gotta turn the pitch envelope up. Now I got this do, 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 right? That's pretty high pitched. So what I can do is I can actually turn the frequency down. So I'm now in kick territory. So it doesn't matter what key I press, the, the frequency is fixed. Now what does this multiplier do? Well, I could be up here and I could just divide by 10. That's all this thing is doing is just dividing and adding, uh, depending upon where you put it, right? So now I've got this pretty deep kick sound. Right now, the next thing I'm, I'm in, in in order to make a kick drum, it's not just the it's not just a deep sound, right? That's not enough. That's not going to cut through any mix. There's no attack. There's no there's no real transient. So I'm going to turn on a second oscillator, and I'm just going to turn it on uh, white noise. Okay. So go back to the envelope, make it a really sharp, quick envelope, and this is what we get. Now we're getting into kick drum territory, but obviously this is too rich, right? So a little bit of filtering. And boom. You got a, a pretty robust kick, okay? I can keep this on fixed. It doesn't matter its noise, but let's maybe go to uh, the 4-bit uh, sign. So now check this out. I can kind of tune like what the head of the drum sounds like, right? Now it's nice and thuddy, right? Okay, so that's why you have a, a fixed controls. You can also do a whole lot more with this and we're gonna cover this more in some of the other videos, but now I've got a pretty robust kick sound, right? I don't wanna stop there. What I wanna show you is that like you can fix these frequencies, but I think, especially in modern music, a, a, a more useful kind of situation is if you don't fix the initial oscillator. And check this out. So as I play different notes up and down the keyboard, I get different pitches. So I'm gonna go down to 
to, to this area. And, and one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this envelope. I'm actually gonna pull this back up. Right? I'm gonna make this uh, just a little bit faster. So the decay section of the pitch envelope will be a little bit faster. Ooh. A lot of music nowadays, a lot of production music has the kick drum and the bass most of the time, uh, especially in, in, in trap music and stuff like that, you have the drum and the bass, almost the same instrument, that kind of 808 thing. That's what I've done here. So right now I've got this oscillator making sort of a clicky sound. And the, in order for really to, to get these to be separated, I can also, remember I can change my algorithm, so now these are totally discrete. If I turn this off, I just get, I have that click, right? Okay, it's at a fixed frequency. I can change the tone of it here. What I can do is I can I can turn this one back on, and now that these are totally discrete, whatever note I play, as long as in my pitch envelope section, the sustain is set at zero steps, any note that I play, I know that'll be a C. So I can play a bass line now. Now that we have this kind of kick drum sound, that's also a bass line, Let's look at some of the other things that the oscillator can do. I'm going to click on the oscillator page. Now, you might be wondering, all right, so what is this? All right, these are the harmonic, that you can choose the amount of harmonics inside of this. Remember, we're going the harmonic overtone series. So this is, uh, this is the fundamental. This is the first octave, right? So what I can do is I can look at less harmonics. Why would I want to do that? Well, let's design this kick drum right now. Those of you that aren't wearing headphones can't hear how deep this 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 kick drum is. You can't hear the bass line, right? If I shrink down the amount of harmonics I'm looking at, I can actually be like, all right, so this is this is the fundamental, this is an octave up, this is a fifth, this is another octave, a third, so on and so forth. Check this out. So I can I can add harmonics in. So listen to the amount of control I have. and not using any saturation. If I want to, I can add saturation also to those so we can make this even har more harmonically complex. Remember, I can choose this shaper, but if you want more options with the shaper, choose one of these analog modeled filters and you have a lot more options. So I'll put it on soft mode, turn the volume down a little bit because it's gonna get a little loud and I'll add some gain. Now just listen to how powerful that kick drum is. You know, and you can always go back to your envelope here and kind of maybe bring it down just a little bit. If you want it to be more punchy and less and have less sustain, you can, you know. Boom. All right, so let's take a look at some of, of the envelope stages. Now, I, I went over the envelope stage before. Obviously, I'm just going to choose... Let's choose a triangle just for the fun of it. What I haven't shown you yet is there's a looping section for this, okay? So in the looping section, you have all these different options. Now, if you look at this, you have just your classic loop, all right? So now, if I turn this all the way down, but the decay stage isn't lower than this, this isn't gonna do anything, right? It'll just wait until the end of the decay stage. So you can crank this all the way down. One thing to do, uh, a lot of the times I'll just crank this down and use this decay stage to determine how long the loop is, right? So check this out. I just turned it up just a little bit. As I pull this down, listen. So what is that? Well, what we're doing is we're looping the the envelope of this oscillator at audio rate. This is a, a common move you can do in modular synthesis. So interacting with these controls, you get these really rad sounds. And then if you, if you decrease the attack, you can soften them. Right? And now, this is a great bass layer for some other FM modulation. Okay, so that's looping at a very fast rate, like audio rate. Now, if I slow this down a little bit, Maybe your head is starting to, to spin a little bit. Oh, cool, well, I could, oh man, I could, I could do all kinds of rhythmic stuff, you're right. So I'm gonna grab a brand new operator. Let's put it on, on a saw. 
Okay. And what I want to do is I'm just going to make this kind of a shorter envelope. Now in the loop modes, I can also choose beat or sync. All right. So beat means that it's going to repeat at a subdivision of your clock. Okay. That you got Ableton set at right now. I'm 102 and it will, now it's doing a 16th, right? Something that's cool about this is that if you play different keys at different times, you can spread it out. So if I play these at the same time, I'm playing, you know, C and F, but if I play them separately, see that spread you get? Or if you do a big chord. All right, so there we go. Now, if you put it on sync though, it will quantize your, your playing to fit if the clock is playing. So here's a, I have a beat going. Feel me? So this is awesome. And and remember, the decay stage is independent of this. So check this out. The decay stage can be modulated. I'm going to focus a lot on this, on, on how operator, I mean, one thing that sets operator apart is its amazing ability to sync up to the clock of Ableton and just how, how integrated Ableton's clock is an operator. Okay, so I'm going to start another a brand new operator. We're going to look at another thing. So right now, when you when you start an operator, you start in this algorithm. If you put it on an algorithm that doesn't have oscillators that are modulating each other, all of a sudden this control comes up, this feedback. So what this does is it makes the waveform modulate itself. So you can go from a, you know, like a sine waveform all the way up to a what sounds like a pretty robust saw waveform, right? How cool is that? Now, let's talk a little bit more about drawing your own waveform. So you can choose, remember you can choose here, you can choose the different harmonic amounts. If you have lower harmonic amounts, you get more lo-fi types of waveforms, right? If you increase all the way up to 64, these, these, these are just higher pitches, right? I mean, that's basically what this is. It's oscillating higher pitches. Whew. Right? So what you also have, I was talking about feedback, you can also repeat the partials of this, which are all these different parts, right? And you get different results. Right? So these, these are all kinds of different ways to make so many different waveforms. Now listen to that. Listen how cool that is. That is a really high harmonic, but still has a lot of the bass tones in it by trying this, this uh, repeat control out. Okay, so that's what that does. I'm gonna open yet another brand new operator and let's take let's take a look at phase. So this is really important to, to, to understand. When you start operator up, you have all of these oscillators, regardless of where you have them, okay? They all have their, their re-trigger and their phase set at zero. So what does that mean? When you play a note, a note on message, all of these oscillators waveforms, regardless of how different they are, they're all going to start at the same place, right? So it's going to start at the beginning of this. Now, if I change this phase on one of them, hear that little click sound at the beginning of the wave? That's because we're cutting this wave off and starting it high, okay? So why does this matter? Well, let's check this out. Let's, let's open a new operator, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make kind of a, a big sounding um, analog style synthesizer sound, all right? So here's a saw... In fact, let's do all, no, let's do all square Ds, okay? So square D, square D, square D to three of these oscillators, all right? I'm going to turn them up about the same volume, and I'm going to set this to your classic subtractive synth discrete oscillator mode, this last algorithm, right? So if I look at this first thing, if I turn the, the re-trigger off, and I, and I just play the notes, listen to each note on. you get different phase relationships between the oscillator. Now, you might say, well, wow, some of those sound really cool, but some of them I don't like. Well, what you can do is you can relock all of these re-triggers, right? And just start messing with the phase of them. So move it around till you like it. So I'm just gonna do B and A, right? They're the same volume. Okay, I like the way that sounds. I'll turn on C. That's 
That's what phase is for. It's the phase relationship between the different oscillators. And even though they retrigger at the same time, their phase starts in different places. So if you want to get that really big kind of analog synth kind of sound, you know, a lot of those analog synths didn't even have the ability to, to, to phase their oscillators in phase with each other. They, 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 they needed a sync signal, and some of them didn't even have that option. So some of the big pads you hear from back in the day had this kind of thing going on, right? So this is where I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to make an analog style pad, all right? Most analog oscillators don't have the luxury of having all these different envelopes, so you'd have to set, you know, you'd have to set their, their envelopes differently. So to make a pad, you know, you open the attack a little bit so that it takes a while, right? I'm going to turn these other oscillators off, and you get... So that's the beginning of our sound. You need to open the release up so that it kind of, you know, washes away slowly. Right? So... Now, if I turn these other oscillators on, let's listen to this. You see how the other oscillators, for some reason, I'm actually going to turn the frequency up so you can really hear this. Listen. Do you see how the harmonics of the other oscillators go away once my finger is up? Well, that's because their envelope is different. What? So what you need to do is you need to click on, in order to make the envelopes the same across the board of all these, you need to click on another envelope and right click on it and say copy envelope from oscillator A. And if you do that to all these, right click in this area, copy from oscillator A, and now you get... All of the envelopes kind of playing together as if they were one envelope, right? So that's that's this. Now, this right click menu has, has a bunch of different options you can see. You can copy from oscillators, you can copy the envelope, so let's say I had a setting on this oscillator where it was a square six with a different decay rate, all this other stuff with some feedback up. I can, instead of copying the envelope, I can just click on here and say, copy the oscillator from A. And see, it just snapped. It copies all the different options. So just to be a completist, <laughs> if you will, you have um, velocity settings right here, right? So it's just, it's really simple. The velocity of this envelope will be generated based on this percentage. So so if I put this on, let's put it on like saw eight. Right, so that's just, that's where that is, if you were wondering. Now the, the key level, this is how much, this is how loud it will get as you go up or down the keyboard. This is a positive or negative thing, just like velocity is, okay? So it'll get louder or quieter as I play, and now it'll get louder and quieter as I go up in notes. So here's... See how the, loud, the, the higher notes are louder? So the final thing I'm going to go over is, um, let's say you've got a kick drum, like, like this one. Um, this section right here just makes it so that when you play harder, then your pitch will either go up or down based on the setting. So let's, you know, let's, I'm going to boost this a little bit. So I'm playing the same note. So I'm playing the same note, but I'm getting different pitches. Now, if you want this to be more um, like like a drum, you're gonna have to turn this velocity quantize off because this just keeps it to lock to certain notes. If I turn this off, listen. Just random values, right? So a very small setting of this goes a long way. Especially with a drum. It's almost like taking a drum head and stretching it. Especially when you got this fixed control on. Okay, now let's take a deep dive into the LFO section, all right? When you turn the LFO section on, first of all, it applies itself to all the different oscillators. So let's just get ourselves a nice little, we'll just use a saw D, maybe we'll use um, two and we'll just slightly detune them. Okay, so right now you just get the classic drunk sound. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to modulate A instead of B, all right? So you get this. Let's make these the same waveform. That's what I meant to do. All right. So you got this nice big fat sound here. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about this, this LFO, you can do some really fun things with it. So the LFO has its own envelope. You can decrease the, the attack so that it will take a while to reach maximum amplitude, right? And what does that sound like? Well, right? 
right? If I make this longer, I can get a pure tone. You know, and setting this in different places. Really gets some cool results. So the LFO also loops. So I'm going to put this on a square D, so it's uh, nice and harmonic. Pull the frequency down a little bit. So right now the, the LFO is re-triggering, right? This little R is on. So every single time I start the LFO, it's going to start in the same place. If I turn this off, that's all that re-trigger is. Whenever you see re-trigger in, in operator, really anywhere, um, it's just talking about the phase of the waveform, right? All right, so now what we can do with this oscillator in terms of looping is really fun, you know? So let's put it on just a uh, beat. And now it's going to re-trigger itself as long as, remember, so the decay needs to be down here. <laughs> How fun is that? So you can make those kind of like like the, the old toy helicopter kind of sounds, right? So that's the envelope. You can do so much more stuff with it. I'm just going to kind of leave it where it is right now. Something else that, that I don't know if you've noticed yet is you have all these different destinations. Look at all of the places you can send this, this LFO, right? So one thing you can do is you can send the LFO to time. Time is incredible. Time, basically what time is, is that all of the different envelopes in the entire operator instance that you're using can be shrank or extended by changing this time control. So let's just, let's just, let's check out what that is, right? So right off the bat, let's just say I have a, I'm going to, I'm going to loop this envelope just for, just for the heck of it, just to, for demonstration purposes, right? So, so this envelope is looping. Now, if I increase time, in fact, I'm gonna make this just a little bit longer. If I increase time, right, it gets longer, right? If I de decrease time, it gets slower. So now, hopefully your, your gears are turning. If you turn on LFO and you turn off all these, bup, 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 and you go to destination and you say, all right, destination to time. <laughs> you hear what's going on? Now, this can get a lot of fun, especially if you check this other mode of the LFO out. If you turn it on to sync mode, now what this does is it locks to Ableton's clock. So if something's playing, and I'm gonna make this some more harmonically rich, let's do Saudi, so listen. Now, it's not gonna change much because it's repeating, okay? And also, we're gonna need to turn the rate down a little bit, but check this out. I'm making a galloping sound, do you hear that? That's because the decay rate is slower than the rate of the LFO. How cool is that? And so I can get different rhythms, actually. I can get different rhythms by changing the amount. And I can also get different rhythms by changing the decay rate of the first oscillator. There's so much fun to be had with the sync rates. Now, let's take a look at some other stuff. Now, if we want to... I, I started a new operator instance, and I'm going to turn this on something harmonically rich again. And let's look at some of the other stuff that we can do. So when we're looking at this, this LFO, we can also put the LFO in a high mode, meaning that it's going to spin as fast as an oscillator. So what does this become? This becomes yet another way to frequency modulate. So if I only send this to, to A, right? Whoa! Let's put this on sign to really hear what's happening. And now we're, we're, we're oscillating it at a, at a very specific rate. And so we can also change the waveform. Now that this is spinning at audio rate, we can really hear this. We can change the waveform of the LFO. Right now it's a, it's a sine. So that's not going to be that extreme of a sound, but if we put it on square, check out how extreme, especially at these high settings, it sounds. Oh, 
And as you play higher or lower on the keyboard, you can change the rate down here of the of the LFO. And you can change the amount by velocity. So check out what we're about to create. This is going to be really cool. So the rate is to the key and the amount is to the velocity. So let's turn this up just a little bit. If I play softly, but if I play hard, how fun is that? So then uh, I could also do these really cool sounds. Let's turn this all the way down. See, what I've done is I've made it so that the attack stage is longer, and now this is just kind of like scrambling up the note, but over time, so I can hear the fundamental. And now, a lot of these, these, these like softer FM kind of sounds that you make with, with Operator can sound a lot better if you go into the filter section and just turn the shaper on, and again, switch to one of these different filter modes. And look at that, I'm not even using the other the other oscillators, I'm just using the LFO, right? And then changing the rate, I get different sounds. So what you could do is you could kind of tune this, let's say you're in like C. Maybe 60. Now it sounds really cool in C. And some of the other notes sound more scrambled. Right, so that's super fun. Now some of these other wave shapes, you can get a lot of stuff. You can actually make this become noise, right? So now if I play this... this kind of lo-fi noise. Now, noise gets brighter as you increase the rate. Why? Because noise is actually just random notes everywhere. So check this out. So you could think of LFO as a really, really robust noise, noise oscillator as well, okay? Sample and hold is kind of the same thing. But because it holds certain positions, it tends to scramble the note more. And as you decrease it, listen. <laughs> and if you turn the amount down, you get some pretty interesting results. Hopefully that's got your gears turning a little bit. This is kind of now like a, a cool like pluck sound. Kind of like Sid style pluck, especially if you put a little distortion. Now, in case you're you're like, whoa, man, slow down, I want to learn that, I want to learn that, I'm going to actually do, the next video is going to be like practical applications of like different things you can do with, with Operator, right? So let's say we've got a complex FM voice. Woo! All right, so that's really complex, right? There's a lot of FM going on. Uh, maybe we'll even change some of these. Yeah, so that's a really bright FM voice going on. So the LFO can also be mapped to what this is this is just so fun you can also map it to the fm drive okay so at at this point fm is 100 percent, right so it sounds but if we go to fm drive listen now obviously that's a little harsh we're gonna pull the filter down now if I want to maybe, let, let's try something else. We're going to do a saw down shape for the LFO. Let's sync it. Okay. And now we have. Right? So how fun is that? So really, it just comes down to you, you know, you, you trying these different things out and figuring out like some of the fun stuff you can do. You can do the same thing with Shaper Drive, right? So... 
I'm going to make this a little bit less harmonically complex. Turn the shaper on, and you know, in, in order for this to work, I need to choose a different algorithm, right? So yeah, now 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 you can start to see that might be a, an, an even more useful kind of voice. And remember, you can always reduce reduce your voices so you don't get that kind of like cross note talk. So this is a really cool like bass line with a lot of movement in it, you know. Another thing you can do is obviously turn the glide time on. Let's make some looping envelopes that are all synced to the clock but synced in different polyrhythms. So we're going to make saw. Okay. And I'm just going to copy this to each one of these. Remember, you can just right click if you have something already set, you can right click and copy copy from oscillator A, copy from oscillator A. Copy from oscillator A. This copies everything, right? Now I'm going to unsync all these. Actually, I'm not. Why not? This could be even cooler. So now I'm going to start looping the envelopes on, on the sync modes, okay? So this one will go every six. This one will go maybe every four. This one will go every sixteenth. And this one will go every... Second. Now, how cool, how cool is that? Just by doing the sync modes, if you have a drum beat, again. Okay, so, so there we go. Now we've got, remember, all these oscillators have a decay rate of 1.81 seconds. Now, if I go to the LFO, let's go over the final thing I want to show you here, time. Okay, time is what, what this does is it actually, it's like a global control in all of the envelopes in all the different sections. So every single one, there's, there's an envelope for each one of these sections. Um, it will decrease or increase the time of those. So, so if I just play this, that's longer. Now, if I decrease this, How fun is that? So that's kind of cool. So what I can do now is I can go in here and I can I can turn on the LFO and I can set it to time. Whoa! So if I unsync this and I change this to some lower rate, maybe something like this. Check it out. So now if I have a beat. Obviously, I you know I can turn off the the pitch modulation and just leave the destination B going right, so I can have notes. I hope this I hope this really gets you excited. You can do so much with rhythm. In fact, you can even sync the LFO at slower rates and get these kind of cross you know cross modulation different things happening in time. Now, because the LFO is, is restarting longer than the, than the phase of this whole thing, you're going to need to set this at shorter times. So. so, yeah, that's like one, like it repeats what it's doing one and a half times for every one time these do it, right? Or I could do it at, at one and it'll kind of just do it at the same rate at, of a bar. Right, so you can do just oh man, it's just it's so fun. Like and and then you can edit the time control. Maybe maybe here's a live performance you're doing. You know, all you have is a macro just mapped to the time control, and everything else is already preset. So. See what I'm saying? So time is incredible, and that's one of the things that really sets Operator apart. Okay. All right, so now let's move on to the filter section, and we're going to go over the stuff we haven't gone over yet. So in, I'm going to start a new operator and put it on something harmonically rich because, I mean, that's what a filter needs to do. I mean, if you have this, you know, obviously just as an aside, you have this on a, on a sign, filter isn't going to do much, right? So I go to something bright. This main filter can't self-oscillate. All right, I'm going to turn this down just to show you. Even though that is that's a lot of harmonics, it's not self oscillating. It's not making its own frequency, right? Um, or it's not making it loud enough to continue over time. So if I choose some of these other models, though, 
When the resonance is above 100%, you really get... Hear that extra ringing sound? You can control that more than you think you can. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can change the frequency based on the key. So if I... Now, a setting of 100% should get it to follow the notes that I play with relative accuracy. And this is a lot more useful if you use, your, once again, your shaper, okay? Sounds like a uh, filter drive above a certain uh, amount will make it so the fundamental waveform coming out of the oscillator will defeat kind of this. So, you know, maybe drive settings are a little bit lower. So this is really fun. Listen to the the wide variety of tones you can get out of the filter, just changing this frequency and changing some of these modes. A lot of the times you can be confused by, by operator's interface. Don't forget that this pitch envelope area doesn't mean it needs to be just for pitch, okay? Now, something that you can do with this pitch envelope is you can also make it go to different places. If I turn off all the destinations, right? This is my sound right now. By changing the resonance at this high because this, this filter is self-oscillating, I'd love to be able to do that with an envelope. And, and the cool thing is that you can. So just like the LFO has these destination Bs, this free envelope, this is a free envelope. You can put this envelope anywhere. I can actually choose something else. So filter resonance, check this out. Now listen to that, I get... I can, I can mess with that, that, that resonance uh, depending upon this setting. So again, this is a plus or minus setting. Now if I wanna go the other way, I can soften that hit or make it harder. Now let's let's explore this free envelope in so many different ways. So now something else that let's just say we have a classic kind of vibrating. <laughs> vibrating sound. Eh, let's do a saw. And let's make this go just a little bit. So that's our sound, all right? So let's turn this, this envelope on, okay? But we're gonna turn off all the switches except for the LFO. And remember, in order to get this to have any sort of effect, this needs to be edited a little bit and you need to turn this up a little bit. Now, if I make it so this LFO starts right away and I'm sending this pitch envelope just to the LFO, and remember, the destination is 100%. If I make this longer, listen to the LFO. See how it slows down? And maybe if I pull this all the way down, check this out. Now we have a... Listen to that, it's kind of like a laser gun. Now that's really fun. I mean, if we did this with a sine waveform and a little bit of FM, we can get some really, really awesome sounds. Now check this out. <laughs> here's, here's, here's some fun. So now I can do oscillator volume to B, okay? And if I turn this all the way up, but make the... I make the percentage that's going to it the opposite. I've got this really nifty, super awesome kind of like transition sound. And that's just having what I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm sending this envelope, this free envelope. It's a free envelope you can send anywhere, really. I mean, I, I really wish that that's kind of what they called it, you know. Um, 
this section, you can send it to all these different places and get these really amazing results depending upon these different settings. Now remember that time, once again, time can change this. So that's a slower one, right? And if you want more harmonically rich stuff, you know, just... <laughs> so let's look at the master section and talk about making a really complex voice, okay? Um, a lot of production music you hear nowadays is made in operator, and a lot of people just don't think that that is true. You know, they, they, they open operator and they're like, yeah, well, you know, it just it sounds cheap, blah, blah. Well, just know that operator doesn't have built-in reverb. Okay, it doesn't have built-in delay. I mean, reverb and delay can really change. I mean, I could get a Casio keyboard and play a Casio keyboard and put it through like a, a Strymon Big Sky or an Eventide uh, reverb and just like it will blow your mind, right? So what Operator really does well in is sounding really good completely dry, okay? And you have all these different connections that you can make with your playing and your, your expressiveness to make these sounds sound really good. So in this case, let's make a harmonically rich... Sound. Pull the filter frequency down. So here's my root sound, right? Pretty uneventful, right? Well, let's go ahead and 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 check this master section out, okay? So not only do you have the time control, which I've already showed you, you have a you have an overall tone. So what this basically is, I think, is an FM index. So even though these are all modulating each other, if the tone is all the way down, you get those discrete oscillators again. But by turning this up, I think it just indexes this amount of, of modulation going to from each oscillator to another. Now, you might be wondering what anti-aliasing does. Well, what this does is it's a filter that's set up so high, you can't really hear necessarily the filter. But what it does is it, 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 it reduces the waveform's amplitude at f frequencies that you can't hear. So what you don't get is, is those distortions. But when you have a harmonically complex situation like this going on, turning this filter on or off can get you different sounds. <laughs> Right? And so that, that's what that's doing, just, just in case you wanted to know. All right, so anyway, back to this. Let, now that we have this sound that we've got going on, let's let's talk about some, some things that we can do with this. We can send velocity to two different places. I mean, this is just so powerful. So obviously filter frequency. If I turn this all the way up and then I turn the filter frequency down, right? easy enough. You know, maybe something that I that I might not be thinking as much of is I could send one to tone, okay? So now I, this is actually changing the FM index, especially if tone is turned down. Right? So, and then, then so maybe aftertouch can open the filter a little bit, right? So I'm going to... And this is especially useful if this is kind of set in more of a... So that's just me pushing the key harder, right? Um, you know, mod wheel, pitch bend, all of these places can go... All of these modulation sources can go to different places, and so you can get a really complex... Really expressive instrument by just messing around with all with all of these. Okay. Okay. So I hope that this has been really informative. Um, again, if you feel like I've messed I've missed something extremely essential, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, like, comment, subscribe. There's another video coming, and it's going to be even crazier than this one. This one's kind of like your boring deep dive, right? Um, I, I hope you really got a lot out of this and you, you learned something you didn't you didn't know before about um, Operator. And yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. It's going to be really, really epic. We're really going to gonna tie a lot of things together. And I'm going to show you how to do specific forms of synthesis and other really fun things there, right? 
Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Much love. See you next time.